I headed north to the snow. I'd heard about a man in Oregon who wanted to turn off all the machines and return to the Garden of Eden. His eyes are staring. His mouth is open. His wings are spread. This is how one pictures the angel of history. His face is turned toward the past. Where we perceive a chain of events, he sees one single catastrophe which keeps piling wreckage upon wreckage. The angel would like to stay, awaken the dead, and make whole that which has been smashed. But a storm is blowing from paradise. This storm irresistibly propels him into the future to which his back is turned, while the pile of debris before him grows skyward. This storm is what we call progress. I think some of us in the 70s began to have some kind of a sense that the concept of revolution was somehow inadequate. Hi, come on in. That there was something that we were missing, that there, there was a deeper problem. What are the institutions or categories or dimensions that, have, that are leading us seemingly faster and faster to a pathological situation in society and, uh, and an increasing destruction of nature? The New York Times said that John Zerzan was an FBI suspect. To track down the Unabomber, the FBI draped the forest with sensors and microphones. They nestled snipers in the trees and summoned satellites to keep watch over lonely mountain cabins. Sometime in the spring of 1995, to my awareness anyway, uh, some of the thinking behind the Unabomber uh, violence uh, came to light and I was struck by some of the uh, sentiments sound very very familiar <laughs> it was surprising and, and heartening too actually that these thoughts seemed to be uh, emerging for once in public was a uh, some kind of a seemingly thoroughgoing critique of technological society this had always been kept to the margins the way technology has encroached on society and leached out so much of its sensuous qualities and its texture, what do you have left except things like virtual reality? But again, what do you get up and do uh, besides sending a bomb to uh, some of these engineers of this horror show that's unfolding, that's a tough one. But, but the first thing, I think, is to break through the barrage of, uh, of everything from the commercials on out to all the rest of it that tells us that it is strictly inevitable, and not only inevitable, but it's pretty lovely. Before he disappeared into the wilderness, Zerzan told me, the world's most primitive peoples have few possessions, but they are not poor. Poverty is the creation of civilization. Try to imagine a way of life where food and land are shared. No rich, no poor. This is the future primitive. 